Hey guys, this is Tool. Uh, welcome to the Fang Real Estate Show. Uh, we do this every Sunday uh, at 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we, we do this to really get all the experts uh, in the real estate, in particular the real estate field, uh, to come and discuss real estate and, and see what we each can learn from each other uh, and, and such. Uh, and so today we, I have a very special guest. Uh, I met this guy about two years ago when I moved here. He doesn't know this, but I was watching him uh, during the uh, uh, um, uh, during the presentation on uh, flips, rehabs, just real estate in general. This was a while ago. I was in the audience. You didn't know that I was there. I remember that. <laughs> okay. There was, right. there was in the audience too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh yeah so uh i uh it, and then uh i noticed that uh he he's done a bunch more ever since i met him there he's been growing a lot leaps and bounds and so i wanted to get him on the show and to uh, kind of discuss uh all the stuff that he's been doing in particular today we're going to be talking about um uh, new constructions because he is he's been building a lot uh the last uh, two three years and so i wanted to get insights on that if you guys are joining us uh, right now, please do like, share, uh, comment, ask your questions because uh, at the end of the show, of course, I open it up for uh, discussion uh, uh, towards the end of the show. So if you ask any of your questions, uh, today's topic is about new constructions. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll leave some of that uh, 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 questions uh, for, for Hong Kong later. So with that said, uh, why don't you do a 30 intro of uh, yourself, who you are, how you got into real estate and then we'll get started. Okay, well, my name is uh, Hong Kong, just like the city. Um, and I would say it's spelled without the space between Hong and Kong. Um, I started real estate in 2011. Um, actually, a, a good buddy of mine, his name is Ye Tao, and I have to kind of mention it because we were, uh, we were good buddies and we, um, we went to college together and then we, you know, obviously kind of finished up school and then realized, hey, you know, what are we going to do next? And then he signed up for this course and the course was something that would teach you how to flip homes. And, um, you know, he had paid for that seminar that we went to uh, 10, I think it was in Bloomington or something. And at that time, you know, we were all obviously really broke. We didn't have any money. The economy was down. This is back in 2010. And, you know, we, um, we were very tempted to pay for the next session. And it was like twenty to $5,000 for uh, a mentor to actually walk you through the flipping, you know, stages. Uh -huh. And so we decided to say, hey, you know what, let's just get a real, real estate license and kind of go from there. So that's kind of what happened. Um, you know, being, um, I did get married in 2009. So um, knowing that, hey, you know, I got to take care of my wife and got one on the way. So I had to do something in my life. So, um, you know, we got a real estate license and then uh, went on into just pretty much doing flipping in the dark, not knowing a single thing about pulling permits or uh, city code compliance stuff. We were just doing things in the dark. Uh, but, be, 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 you know, a little bit of background for me is I also have a, a master's in human resource. And that's something where I, you know, uh, when I was working at corporate where I realized that, you know, if I stay here and work nine to five for the rest of my life, there's no way I can, you know, make into, you know, being, uh, being stable in society. So, yeah. Yep. Well, I get a lot of HR guys that turn to real estate. There's, <laughs> there's been like three, four of you guys that I, uh, I had on the show that used to do HR stuff and then move on to real estate. Yeah. So uh, interesting. There must be something about HR that prepared you for real estate. Was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You start to see uh, how much people make. <laughs> so oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You get to see how much people make. Maybe that's the thing that switched people over. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay, that's cool. So you guys started by, you know, uh, I mean, a friend introduced you. Basically, you guys went to like those uh, free seminars about real estate. Uh, but instead of paying for like the, the mentorship course, which is probably like 20, 30,000, you decided to just get your real estate license instead, right? So, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So that's cool. Uh, how you got into real estate? Uh, why real estate though because i mean uh if you see how much people get paid uh doing hr stuff i mean you could go to any other fields or was it just accident that your friend you know got you into real estate i think during that time of the market we realized that homes are really cheap you know we realized that ramblers in st paul 
uh, east side we're going for 40 50k you know and you're like uh -huh. you know if you can buy a house with that much and a car costs you about 20 30k already you know uh -huh. it's pretty smart to make that investment you know and um you know i mean real estate okay, it's 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 something you can also do it part-time so it's not like you have to commit full-time you know if you've got a full-time job okay you can pick up real estate on the side part-time yeah yeah okay so were you still at the hr job at that time when you guys I was. Okay. I was. yeah yeah that's fine uh i know we talked to uh, one of my buddies before and he's an engineer he's still doing that uh it's his engineering work and then still making like a sizable living uh doing real estate part-time too but that guy's very systematic uh, you know so uh he's really good um so so where are you now i mean let's get to like today so that was like that was like nine years ago uh that you got started so let's get to today what 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 sort of your real estate investment portfolio and business is looking like right now um i would say i don't really i guess the question is what do you, what do you mean by like what, what like what am i doing today uh versus i was yeah like where, yeah like where are you today i know like you opened up a broker garage you have your general contractor license uh your your i mean obviously you're a real estate investor so like uh, uh, you know what else i mean uh, you know all the stuff that you're doing just kind of explain where you are uh, at this point so i guess the uh, the beauty the beauty the beautiful thing about real estate is that you know it's not something where obviously you know it's it's like a, a it's like a really it's like a foundation you know so real estate what it does is it allows you to kind of fast forward some of your financial gains and it opens up doors to you doing other things so um you know i think the the, the key thing we all look at ourselves, we probably, we, we call ourselves entrepreneurs, right? But we consider ourselves, you know, how do we make money off anything, you know? So real estate is kind of the vehicle that allows you to open some of these other doors. So for me, I'm always open to finding ways to say, hey, how, what, what kind of things can I still capitalize on making money? And and sometimes it doesn't have to be real estate. Sometimes it could be uh, a restaurant owner or a model, uh, you know, a home care owner. Um, but for me, I'm more focused right now is, it's trying to figure, you know, trying to figure, still trying to figure out what, what's out there for me, you know. And obviously, we we, we make these moves based on how the, the way the economy flows too. Yeah. And so for me, I I've transitioned from opening um, my own broker with my partner Wendy, and so we've grown to uh, to a point where I think we're stabilized and it's good. And uh, you know, construction wise, like you, you know, obviously as a flipper, you realize that eventually you're gonna have to get your contractor license. So I got my contractor license about two and a half years ago, and you know, working on projects. Uh, and then, you know, I obviously see all, my eyes are always out there open to, to, to take on any other business opportunity. Like, um, you know, it, about a year ago, I, or I opened a, a wondrous ice cream at Appleton. So it's just keeping my eyes open for opportunities that I can take advantage of. Yeah. So you're not strictly just a real estate guy. I, I see the poster behind you, right? So you're, you're really an entrepreneur, like doing a bunch of different things. So that's awesome. Um, that's, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, that's cool. So um in, in terms of the real estate stuff uh i we talked uh, a little bit about your brokerage can you talk more about that like why did you form that brokerage and uh what sort of the idea behind it the pro thought process because you guys got a bunch of people now right most most brokerage i mean you you're only a few years old and you got what close to 100 agents or something now or I wish we were at hundred, but we're about a little bit over eighty. So yeah, uh, we started two years ago, and, and the uh, the foundation of partners realty is really, I think of it more like uh, think of it like when we're still college students, you know, and we we have like Asian clubs at school, right? We have these Asian uh, clubs that we join and then we uh, that we associate ourselves, and and the whole point of the Asian club is to to help each other excel in whether it's school or life. So you know, partners realty is more like we want to be able to supply you with some tools to be successful in real estate whether it's buying selling or investment yeah. and we don't really want to charge you a whole lot of money for learning these things because you know our, our, our key terms is long-term relationship we want you to come in uh, learn as much as you can grow your business and you know whether that takes you somewhere else that's totally fine because our our focus is that we want to be able to build more partnerships and more um or more teams that way you know and and so partners realty is more like a, kind of a like a i think of it more like a, a a college group where you guys come in park your license pay very minimal fees yeah. and uh we want to be able to train you guys as much as we can in terms of investment and 
I think one of the biggest thing I see with uh, real estate agents is that you know most of them once they want to be uh, investors, they want to be able to flip homes and do wholesale contracts. But I think the biggest downfall I see is not being able to understand these things. And when they get into it, okay, when they make that big mistake, okay, it, it takes them away from from recovering. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's very discouraging when you make a mistake and, and your money is on the line in, in that mistake too, or like it holds you back a few months. Uh, and so it's good to have like a group of people around you that support each other. Um, I like that you use that sort of college social or college club groups. That's really what it is. You're joining a, a group of people, a group of like-minded individuals that support each other. And provide resources so no wonder you guys grew like 80 people within uh, 80 agents within like two years i, I can never imagine if, if i were to build a brokerage to to ever have that many people uh within two years so that's great congratulations uh, uh on your guys success over there yeah thank you okay uh okay let's step back uh to maybe in the back like uh earlier you said you didn't really have money i thought you grew up with a lot of money so <laughs> Uh, how, how did, how did you, what was your first real estate deal? Let's talk about well, that. Just so I we know how you guys start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Most of us can relate, right? We, you know, we're always taught to go to school, you know, become doctors and lawyers for our parents, you know, and, uh -huh. and, and some of us are fortunate to be able to achieve that goal, you know, but, you know, unfortunately me, I, I tried that. I, I tried to go to law school. It just, it just wasn't for me. And, um, you know, when I realized that the economy was down, I realized that, Hey, it just make a lot of sense to get into real estate. And again, you know, a lot of it was YouTubing, you know, just knowing what's out there. Uh -huh. And uh, my first deal was back in 2011 when I got my license. And so it was, I mean, it's your first deal. You're not, I guess you're really not going to forget your first deal because that's yeah, yeah. Not the deal that, that, that made you, you know? So yeah. I think I was fortunate enough to, and that's when I already got my license. And I was fortunate enough to get uh, a short sale in North St. Paul. And it was about 55,000 at that time, you know? And obviously we can't find these kind of deals today unless we do all these uh, harder work, but, you know, I got it for 55,000 and I went in there obviously not having any experience in rehabbing, you know, so um, everything was YouTubing, you know, trying to figure out how do you hook up the sink, trying to figure out how do you, how do you paint, you know, you know how do you do a, a tile remodeling kit, uh, bathroom and kitchen. So uh, first it was very interesting. I took about, I was still working full time. So I took about a month and a half on it. Uh -huh. And so it was like coming home from work and then heading to the rehab every night. Yeah. Um, and then on the weekends, you were there pretty much 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the first one, obviously, got lucky. I went through uh, without any issues and, and sold the first deal. And I made about 40000 off that, this rehab. And so that's what got me started, you know. But to yeah. fund all this money to get this rehab was hard, too. It was basically going to family members and trying to see, hey, let me borrow $10,000. I'll pay you back with interest. Or, you know, let me, or go to your parents and try to get some money to, to make the deal work. And so fortunately, I was enough to find some um, people that were there to kind of help fund this deal for me and uh, which made it all happen. Yeah. So, so this one, you just bought all cash with like. All cash. Yep. Yeah, all yeah. cash. And I, uh, I mean, at that time, I didn't know anything about hard money too. So um, <laughs> the only thing yeah. I knew was to say, use your own cash. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but that's that's awesome. Like, uh, you know, you're hustling and going out there and talking to family members. I know some people were like, uh, some. I mean, when I'm getting to business, people always said don't mix business with family stuff. So you got some family involved uh, investing on that first deal. What are your thoughts about that? It's, yeah, it's, it's always tricky to go, that the rule of business is, they, yeah, they always say don't do business with family, you know, and because they yeah. didn't destroy family, to be honest with you. And so, um, the thing is, you, you're trying to leverage where you're the one needing more help, and so that way the family member can understand that hey, you're, they're helping you, and they don't have anything, any gains part of it. Um, when you get family involved, where there's some gains of it, perhaps that might change. Uh, but if they're just straight up to want to help you, you know, they'll they'll help you. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, to me, I feel like it's not just family, but your circle, like the people that are closest to you, right? Your circle of friends or influence. Um, that's going to be, it's sort of like your warm market. So that's going to be like the first people you should turn to, uh, to help, uh, uh, to help you in times of, you know, needs, or in this case, uh, starting your uh, real estate career. Uh, so wow, $40,000 profit on your first deal. That's really good, man. Yeah, it was crazy because you, that's, 
I, that's the most money you've seen. And, and, you know, <laughs> and but then you know again, um, you know, to all investors, don't don't take that moment for granted. Enjoy it because I think as you start to excel more, uh, it's hard to get that feeling back. You know, sometimes I always joke my wife. It's like, you know, I, I wish I could have that feeling back. And sometimes it's not all about the money. You know, it's yeah. just the, the the feeling of the accomplishment that you that you earn. Yeah, yeah. So this you bought it as a short sale, and then you fix it up, and then you flipped it. Was was that what it is? It's just a flip. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's awesome. Um, uh, I really like that. Okay. Uh, I mean, you've done some flips and stuff. So, uh, but you recently kind of, I mean, not recent, but uh, uh, the past past like a few years or so, you kind of switched from flipping to doing new constructions, right? Or how did that transition go about? So, you know, I think you you kind of realize that if you really want to grow, you have to start doing things that you're not comfortable with, you know? And if you keep on always doing the things that you're you're really comfortable with, it's good too, but uh, it limits you from growing. So um, what I did was I decided to say, hey, you know, flipping was really, was going really well for me, but you start realizing that you're plateauing as a, as a, as a investor, you know? Uh-huh. And so then that's when I realized that, hey, you know, let, let me get into something that's, that's bigger than that, you know? And, you know, I mean, new construction is just pros and cons too. Uh, but you got to ask yourself, why is it all these big builders are constantly building all these houses, you know, and look at that market and realize where it's going, you know, I mean, it's hard to say what's going right now, but, you know, a few years ago, we saw, uh, we saw a lot of lots being sold and uh, we saw lots of prices going up. We saw, you know, the housing market went up really high, right? So yeah. it just made a lot of sense. And sometimes if I can, really go back, I, I would have started sooner to build than, you know, to wait, um, you know, uh, a few extra years. Yeah. And so, you know, new construction allows you to actually understand really the blueprints of, of homes, you know, and, and as a rehabber, you know, it's like, we're all still learning too. Like even me, if I, if I were to get back in rehabbing, there's always things that I learn, you know? Yep. And so yep. new construction allows you to also learn beyond, you know, your scope of, of your knowledge. So it opens a lot of doors, it opens a lot of perspectives in, 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 in investment of real estate. Okay. Well, that's cool. Uh, all right, let's get to today's topic then. Today's topic is, uh, you know, building profits, or well, the title I put is Building Profits by Building New Construction. So um, why don't we talk about one of your construction deals? Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so of course, it's a new construction deal. Uh, I mean, new construction is just building a brand new home from scratch, essentially, right? Yes. So, um New construction is, is yeah, basically building a brand new house. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. Okay. So uh, how did you find, uh, all right, so let's go to that deal. How did you find this deal? I mean, I think you start with, how do you even start? I don't even know what to ask. <laughs> so, yeah, there's, 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 there's a couple of ways you could start with new construction. You know, and the traditional method is obviously to fund your own cash, to buy your own lot, and then yeah. to build everything with your own money. Um, I don't really, I'm not really a fan of that approach because, you know, you're, you don't want to get your money obviously glued onto everything. You know, you want to be able to use the money to invest. Yeah. And um, there's a lot more risk too, obviously with your own money, you know, things can go wrong and you, you know, who knows, you know, uh, but the, the, the approach that I like to take is more, you know, as, as I mean, if you're a real estate agent out there, right, you're, you come across buyers that, yeah. that will look at houses and they'll realize that, look, I'm paying so much for a Rambler in St. Paul. Yeah. then they might look into the option of building a new home. Uh-huh. And so some of the things we've heard with new construction is that you need a lot of money down, right? You need about 20 to 30% down to be able to do a new construction. And, you know, before the COVID-19, lending for new construction was, wasn't that tight. You know, it wasn't that strict in a, in a way where there's actually lenders out there that you can actually get a new construction loan with as low as 35% down. And How so... Much? Three to five percent down. Three to five percent down on new construction. On new construction, so I mean, it wow. works just like a traditional loan. It's just I mean, the kickback is the interest a little higher on it, you know, because yeah, you no. Know? Um, but you know, if you can, you know, if you can go that route again, it, it makes sense too. It makes sense. Why not just get a brand new house? Yeah, yeah. Wow, especially like three to five percent down. Yeah, you get a brand new house. I mean, that's uh. You know, you make sure all the electrical, all the electrical and plumbing is brand new, so you never have to worry about that. All the dark works brand new, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, that's cool. Okay, so this deal that you uh, did, how did you find the deal? I mean, I, I guess you start with the land, right? So how did you find the land? 
So, you know, um, I guess I'll use in this example, I'll use a traditional uh, example in East side because yeah. I think that's kind of where the, the bond market is. So, yeah. you know, um, three years ago, you'll find loss for 10, 15 K, but obviously that's not the case anymore. Right. Yeah. Uh, they're going up. Uh, but you know, this particular deal, I had some partnership too. So it wasn't just all me going in there. And, mm-hmm. um, and, and I, I like to use this example because it's, it's also one of my first one. And so it's one of the ones that I learned the most and okay. uh, like learning how to work the city, learning how to get all these, uh, uh, require paperwork into the city to get the uh, permit approved mm-hmm. and so um in this example we'll, we'll use a split entry uh well in this example it was a split entry okay and so you're looking at uh 950 you know, 1000 foundation um yeah. and it's your you know you look at a split entry you get about 18 to 9 almost 2000 square footed and so a lot run the lot on this uh i think you broke up hong kong you might have to i got it about yeah. you know got uh, 20k uh, how come? Can you repeat that? Uh, you broke up for a little bit. So okay. it was a split entry, uh, about a thousand square feet foundation that you guys dug, and then uh, so you get close to almost two thousand square feet home. And yeah, so very close to two thousand. Yeah. yeah. And and so in this particular deal, you know, um, um, you, you you actually have a buyer. So we found a buyer before we even built this place. So oh. we package we package everything from the lot and the building. And so um, the, the sale price in this house was about 285. Uh-huh. Um, and so some of the key, some of the benefits of having a buyer in, in advance is that they go through the whole entire new construction loan. And then that money is actually used to fund the deal. So you yeah. actually, as a contractor, you know, you're really going there with no money down, but we all know the way it works, just like a, just like a hard money loan, right? Yeah. And sometimes contractors will have to end up using their own money ahead to get the project moving because yes. sometimes the banks do take a little longer to get to get you the funds uh-huh. so in this particular deal you know you you get this house to build i'll just run the numbers really quick here you're probably looking at about uh 25 20k for the lot and then the house went about 171,000. so you end up spending about 190 okay as a contractor you're spending about 190 and the sale price was 285. so after all the uh the, uh, the expenses and everything, um, you're netting about sixty to eighty thousand on a new construction deal that that took about seven to eight months. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, this is great what you did. I mean, you pretty much found the seller. I mean, the buyer already. So that eliminates like a large risk factor, pretty much already, right? Yes. Okay. And, and one thing I always want to uh, say is, you know, as as real estate agents, right? We in the, in the past, when we don't have access to being uh, able to build, we, what we do is we help the, uh, the, our, our client buy this lot, right? And what do we do? We, we actually help them transition to finding a builder themselves. And we get compensated for the commission on the lot, but we didn't benefit anything from the new construction loan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so at, at the end, when, you, when, you, when the buyers buy it, do you still represent the buyer too as a, I mean, your agent? That's what well, you're a broker too. So do, do you get paid on that also or just a lot? Uh, so you get, you get paid on both. So yeah. uh, it's the lot commission and the whole entire. When you, so when you're building this house, you're the builder, you put your builder's contract in place. Yeah. And so you obviously just told that you were the, also the agent that helped them purchase their lot. And then, you know, at that point already, you really already sat down with your, uh, your client and ran through all the numbers in terms of um, all the renovations and all the updates, you know, so, um, at that time, yeah, you 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 become the agent and the builder on it. Okay, so this uh this budget wants so twenty k to buy the land, and then the build price is one seventy. Does that include like uh you pay yourself as the contractor already, or uh, uh or what does that include? That one seventy. So one seventy is typically the average of work that the contractor subs everything else. So from from excavating, from surveys, from erosion controls, uh, from you know framing, everything. So that's that really doesn't really include your your, your fee as a contractor. And uh-huh. so that's why the uh, the beauty of being on being on builder and contractor is that you're uh, you're 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 inventing these opportunities for you. You know, so instead of like being a flipper where I'm going out there finding deals and I'm being my own contractors, but I'm being compensated a lot less when I sell this rehab. Yeah. You know, you're doing something that's a lot easier and the numbers are more, uh, the numbers are more stable. So let's say you get a quote 
uh, for electrical for let's say 10,000, you know, yeah, it's going to be $10,000. There's not going to be a change order like a rehab where, you know, it's 5,000. And then once they start knocking walls down, it becomes 10,000, you know, so that usually throws you off the rehabs. And so new construction is, is, is safe in that route. Uh, so when you look at the numbers is that contractors typically make 25% of the, uh, the value of the home. Yeah. So let's say if on a big home, like a $400,000 house, the contractor usually makes about a hundred thousand dollars minimum. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's the great thing about new construction. That's why I started to look at it. Uh, and uh, we have a, a few of your agents are, are, are some of the buddies that I met, met up with and they're building. And, and so uh, I was like, yeah, maybe it makes more sense because I always get like change, like change, change of orders all the time in my rehabs because we find like we're not walls down and we find new things then yeah it, it, it becomes more difficult to budget so i guess another risk factor that eliminates uh doing build doing new construction is that your 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 budget pretty much doesn't move as much right pretty much stays the same okay all right uh that's great um so how long was it again? You said uh, for for this specific deal, how long from beginning to end? Oh, eight months. Eight months. Okay. And then how, how? I mean, people always maybe not people, but I'm I'm kind of afraid to talk to like like getting all the permits and all the paperwork and stuff like that. How's that whole paperwork process go? Like, yeah. The biggest thing is it just depends on the city. You know, if you work with a city that is pretty prompt to be turning uh, your emails and your calls, and again, it's it's pretty fast. Uh -huh. um, and um, I have to admit, you know, it, it, it becomes sort of a political gate too. You know, if you know people that are in the political offices in the gate, you know, sometimes you'll get your, your things pushed a little faster. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, and then uh, how about like the, uh, the architectural part of it? Like uh, how does that work? You have to get think certain things designed, right? Um, and uh, so, so how do you guys do that? And so we have, uh, we have some, uh, blueprints available and um, we, uh, some of the easiest way I tell um, people that are interested in building homes you know the the traditional approach is you hire an architect who actually draws everything of what you want uh -huh. uh, that can be pretty expensive because if they're taking the time to draw everything out in the gate you know they'll charge you based on square footage of the home the time it takes them to get this drawing out in the gate you know it could run from five to ten thousand uh -huh. uh, dollars but as we all know in the gate you know um, the internet is so advanced now. So if you go online, you can you can probably find a blueprint for maybe less than two thousand dollars. And if there's anything that you want modifying the blueprint, you just contact the person, the company, and usually what they'll do is they'll be able to accommodate what you want. Uh, so let's say, for example, if you need to take out a room or make a room bigger or maybe add a basement to to the blueprint, I think you can do so. You know, so yeah. um, you know, really, when you think about it, new construction homes, you can actually draw your own plans as as you know. Let's say you're finding this deal yourself, right? Yeah. You can typically draw this floor plan yourself on a piece of paper, take it out to the uh, city, and they'll actually help you look at it and say, hey, here's what you need. You know, what's, what are the type of uh, uh, frame that you're using? And what is the type of wood and everything? You know? So yeah. when you think about it, they're not really that strict. Um, as long as it, uh, they have a plan reviewer guy that will look at it, a guy or girl that will look at it and say, hey, um, this needs to be code, so we need to know what's, what's going on over here. You know? Uh-huh. So you know when you think about it, like yeah, you can draw your own basic plans and take it down, and, and if it gets approved, you can you can build that plan. Oh, I didn't I didn't realize that. Oh, and I forgot. Yeah, the city is really there to kind of help you too. So yeah, uh, yeah, they'll they'll guide you and, and let you know. Uh, so uh, your suggestion, yeah, I didn't think of finding templates online either. Find templates and then uh, you know make changes uh, as you go. Uh, what type of I mean, you've been building for a while. So what's, what sort of type of, uh, do you guys have a few templates and what's sort of the best, uh, I guess, uh, um, um, like, like the type of uh, design that most people are most attracted to buyers? I think one of the cheapest floor plan to build is build a split entry. Um, the reason why is because you're not digging so much. Excavation is a lot less. Uh -huh. And then your foundation is usually half the price because it doesn't go all the way. It doesn't, you're not really pouring a lot of concrete or if you're doing block foundation, you're not putting a lot of blocks here. Uh -huh. So usually if you're building on a, on a, on a budget, and get, you know, split entry is usually the most cost effective. Uh, if you're building on to get, to capitalize on the most square footage, a two story is the way to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are, are most of your uh, design split entries at this point? 
Uh, um, we, we do a lot of the uh, two stories. I think two stories are still more common than spit and cheeks. Uh-huh. Okay. But usually in St. Paul, okay, I think the, um, the spit and cheeks are pretty popular, more popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the split and cheeks. I think um, um, because you really get to use your basement um, properly. I, I feel, I think there's more light in the basement um, yeah. for that. Um, okay, so, uh, I mean, you've done both. Uh, what are your thoughts between like, you know, doing the traditional rehab and uh, doing new constructions and any similarity or differences there um, and why you would pick one over the other? I think the process of, of planning is still one of the biggest important thing. Besides planning is running the numbers, right? Making sure it makes sense. Uh -huh. um, because uh, just like rehab, you know, you can make a lot of mistakes in new construction if you run your numbers incorrectly. Okay. And, um, you know, there's raw land versus land that's in the city where obviously, you know, you can bypass having it to get, to get it tested for, you know, soil correction and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, of, of, of similarity that you have to do your work before which is a lot. The planning is the biggest thing, you know. So um, I, I saw Chai ask a question about uh, what do you avoid in some of the things in new construction. So, yeah. you know, obviously rehab, some, uh, you, sometimes you go for the cheapest bidder because you're trying to minimize all your costs. Yeah. But sometimes new construction is all about time. So if, you know, for me, I like to support a lot of the, uh, the local small business, uh -huh. uh, but it, it can also backfire. You know, if, if, if you've got the schedule and they can't come out and get the work done again, you're behind, you know. So, I mean, like for example, you can't cover the walls unless the plumbing and the uh, the plumbing, the electrical and HVAC all pass the inspection. So, yeah, you know, bigger companies they do, I would say they do a, a quicker job in uh, uh, in terms of getting the inspection passed. They can put you avoid a timeline. And just like we have, it's the same thing, you know. Uh, when you're waiting on your subcontracts to finish the work, that's mm -hmm. usually when you're 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 stalled and you can't get the you know, the next step in in place. Yeah. So uh, what would you, uh, what are your thoughts about, uh, you know, I mean, going back to the rehab and new construction, if you do, were to do a rehab and a new construction, what are the time difference or the efforts that you put into those two things? Or are they both pretty similar? Oh. I would say, you know, um, with, with a rehab, like a, you, you know, you, you face a lot of uncertainty. So you go in there with the dilemma of not knowing really everything you know i mean you can be an expert and run across major issues in, uh -huh, whether it's yeah. foundation you know um so i would say to me the safest route is still the new construction route but let's say if i've got a quick turnaround for rehab if you yeah. you know if you go in there and you realize there's a rehab that needs to be done that doesn't need a lot of a lot of work uh really it's just cosmetic work and again you know if you can turn that rehab really quick and make you know 30 40k then it's also a really good deal yeah yeah okay yeah, yeah, I think, uh, like you said, um, I mean, based on a lot of the research and a, a couple of the guys I talked to and you now, um, it, a new construction just seems to be more certain because you, especially if you find a buyer already, in your guys' case, uh, essentially there's almost no risk uh, except to just make sure everything gets built. Uh, so that's great. Uh, what are the sort of typical margins? I know we talked about, uh, about it before. You said around... Um, was it or what, what what's the typical margin that you guys look for and maybe sort of the industry typical margins like profit so margins the, the, the minimum we we try to aim is 25 percent. so mm -hmm. let's say if the house is going for three hundred thousand yeah. dollars then we have to make about at least seventy five thousand yeah. and so um you know the the numbers i was i was kind of look at aim is you know it, it costs a contractor about 95 to 110 bucks a square to build uh, -huh. uh that's kind of the average uh, every state might be a little different, but what I've noticed with some of the new construction that I've done is that's kind of the numbers that I've had. You know, if you can find cheaper subcontractors, your numbers might be lower. Uh, if you're building a house where you're not doing a lot of major uh, expensive updates, like it, it could be a lot less than that too. Yeah. Uh, and the sale price is usually, uh, what I see from some of the sales of my new construction is it ranges from 155 to 175. Yeah. Um, you obviously, if you go to like an area like Grand Avenue in, in, or Summit in St. Paul, you know, if you get, if you, if you find yourself a really good deal in a gig, you know, the square footage might actually become higher. You know, if you got yourself a really good deal in a lot, you know, in a gig, it makes up for it. So you could be selling for 250 a square uh, versus yeah. you know, your, your typical 155, 175 a square. Okay. Um, that's, that's great. Uh, that's really good margins. I mean, 25%, that's still good, uh, especially uh, with less certainty, or I guess you manage your risk. 
Um, okay, so, I mean, obviously, you're not gonna be putting, I mean, if someone started out, I'm not gonna pour concrete myself. And I'm not gonna, uh, I mean, do you recommend me to just, you know, go and pour concrete myself and start framing myself or, or uh, you know, hire, uh, right? Um, because I think that's sort of the mindset that some of us get that, oh, well, I don't know how to pour concrete. I don't know how to put up frames. So how do I even begin to think about building a home? Yeah, I think some of the biggest struggle with uh, builders is finding uh, carpenter, uh, people that frame uh, houses, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if, if you're a handyman and you got the skills to do it, like framing, like, yeah, it's great. But when you're talking about concrete, like, yeah, you know, it can be very expensive if you do it yourself, right? If you mess yeah. up, like, yeah, you're tearing down the concrete and repouring, it's gonna cost you double the price. Oh, uh, yep. So, you know, there's some contractors that they, spe they specialize in this kind of area, this stuff. So yeah. it's just having to reach out to figure out, you know, who's who's done a really good job. And some people that pour concrete, they won't pour foundation because they they don't have the expertise to pour, pour foundation. So you actually have to find a company that does, you know, foundation, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you know, I work with guys that do really good concrete work driveways, but they refuse to do uh, foundation pour. Oh, okay. um, and so, uh, and, the, and the biggest, the hardest thing with, uh, with new construction is finding uh, frameworks. So if you contact big companies, they're probably years booked up. So, I mean, if you're building a home, they're probably not interested in even want to build your house for you. So yeah. you, you, you tend to have to go to the local uh, carpenters. So it's all based on how their schedule opens up too. Yeah. Yeah. So with that said, how do you, how, how, how do you find these subcontractors, like these foundation guys or these framers or these electricians, these plumbers uh, uh, to help you with this project? What so, do you look for in them? So I guess the truth is, one thing I look into is like, I look into the reputation of working with the city. So sometimes if you go to the city's uh, website, uh, you can you can get a list of the city's uh, subcontractors. You know, city like, for example, um, that do a lot of the uh, uh, homes for uh, uh, low-income families, you know. And yeah. there's got to be a reason why the city is using these subs. Because A, they're getting the work done. And then B, you know, their price is probably reasonable, more reasonable. So, yeah. you know, and, and when you hire these people, it's it's a... It's just like everything you do. It's just trying them out and see if, see if it works out. You might yeah. come across a company that doesn't do good work and you'll never use them again. And then you might come across a guy that does really good work and you know they become your partner. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't think of that. Going to the city. I mean, the subcontractors that the city use, you know, they, they should be decent. So uh, uh, that's great. That's a great tip there. All right, uh, any, anything else you want to say about uh, the new uh, constructions or the lessons that you learned, especially with this project that you did um, did this side. Um, I think new construction. Okay, you know the uh, one of the things that obviously amazes everybody in rehab is seeing the before and after, right? So oh, yeah. you know, it's just like being able to see the lot by itself with trees, and you know uh, maybe a year down the line you see a nice big big house with a family in there. So that's kind of the beauty of a new construction, and you know uh, to to kind of. As, as a builder, you get to see all these materials that you play around with things that, hey, um, you know, as a builder, you don't just build a house to make a profit too. You're building a house to really put a family in there. Yeah. And it's also your reputation of your line of work. So it's important that the things you do are right. And it's also important that the things you do that, you know, like for example, will last a long time. You know, you know it's avoiding taking shortcuts uh, and, you know, it's always gonna bite you in the end. So it's learning how to do things right. So that way you can run your business uh, long-term and short-term. Yep. Um, do you guys also build for other investors too, or do you, are you just uh, building for yourself at this time? I'll be honest, at this time, we don't have the capacity yet um, to build for other investors. Uh, <laughs> but that's the goal, though. Yeah, the goal is to be able to grow. Uh, yeah. You know, that's why we, uh, we, uh, we, I, we put a lot of eco partners, and that's supposed to be uh, a third, uh, you know, our third company with uh, Eco Green Construction and Partners Realty is to, to create more of a like a group where you know uh, individuals who are interested in learning how to project manage can come in and learn yeah and i think that's the skills that requires you to be successful is uh you know being able to look at numbers is one thing and the other thing is being able to project manage correctly because yeah when you can't project manage it correctly you can lose a lot of money and when that happens in the you know you're not going to want to do uh you know you're not going to want to get into investment anymore but um you know project managing is very important because it gives you the skills and the confidence to to, to get on bigger projects. And, you know, in the future, we all want to get into commercial. We all want to be able to uh, be the next uh, home company that we're building 
skyscrapers, you know, and yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta see what you guys are doing over there. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 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 check out all the stuff that you guys are doing. Anyways, you guys are doing great work over there, so that's good. Um, all right. So if someone wants to start off doing new constructions now, like what, 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 what's the first thing that you recommend they should do? I would say to get some uh, some mentorship uh, training. So uh, maybe perhaps um, work under a contractor. And, and learn some of the, uh, the the skills and the traits. Um, you don't have to be handy. You know, I would say it's actually better that you're not handy. You know, if, when you're handy, you're tempted to want to take on the project yourself. But when you're not, you learn the concept of having to to sub everything out. And that's what yeah. we want to do. You know, you can't grow doing being your own plumber and being your own uh, um, framer. You know, you grow by understanding the business of it and learning how to leverage people that are working with you. So you know, be, give me some experience as a project manager to go ahead and start. And then eventually you'll lead to getting your own contractor license. Uh, most people will be surprised to know that, you know, it takes to get your contractor license is actually a lot faster than getting your real estate license. And oh, what? <laughs> yeah, the hours that you take to, to take on this test is not even mandatory. So, you know, let's say, for example, if you sign up for a, a course at Kathleen to get your, uh, your contractor license, uh -huh. it's 16 hours. Yeah. And then you can take your test, you know. And so the test is 25% uh -huh. open book. 75% no, open book and then 25% on, on terminology. Yeah. So, you know, I, I tell people, yeah, it's crazy how they will allow you to be able to build houses by just taking a two day course and yeah. passing an exam, you know? <laughs> so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man, every time I talk to you guys, I want to get like more licenses, but <laughs> maybe, maybe in the future. Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, uh, so, you know, the first thing, if you want to get started, go find someone that has been doing it, um, like Hong Kong or a few other people out there. Um, and, you know, just to kind of start learning that process. So uh, that's great. Um, I think... Uh, I think we're so, towards the end. It's already been an hour, so um, <laughs> it, it goes by quick. But we're sort of towards the end of the conversation already. Um, if you guys are joining us, uh, again, we're towards the end of the conversation. Uh, leave any questions that you guys have, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll ask uh, Hong Kong some of those questions. So will you stick around for another, like, uh, 10 minutes or so answering some questions? Uh, all right, so you ready for some questions? Yeah. OK. Yeah, uh, and if you guys are watching this on YouTube later uh, and have some questions, go ahead and leave them in the question in the comments, uh, and either I or I will forward those to Hong Kong to answer those uh, later on. Uh, so let's start with um, let's see. I saw some questions earlier. Let's start with Chai. Uh, so Chai Xiong, uh, Mr. Mong Hustler, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's see. Ask him if uh, if. Do you see prices increase in in construction after we just uh, printed two trillion? Okay, yeah. So because of this pandemic and with the Fed uh, print over two trillion dollars, uh, have you seen any increase in uh, construction prices? I would say, to be honest, it, it's hard to tell because it's hard to tell because uh, we don't know what's the uh, what the uh, domino effect is going to be on. Uh, on, on the, uh, the regular traditional homes, you know? Uh -huh. um, I've talked to some builders that are a lot, uh, you know, like Michael Lee, uh, you know, uh, Model Hansen builder. They're, yeah. they don't, they don't, they're don't they not so worried about it, you know? And obviously as a small fish like me, I, I wouldn't know so much too. But in my opinion, I think there's always gonna be a market for new construction, you know? There's, gonna, there's always gonna be those folks that they want to upgrade because they can, because they're getting good jobs and, you know, they wanna move out city where they want to go back in the city so yeah. there's always going to be those group of people um the effect of housing price going down i wouldn't be surprised to see it go down a little bit uh -huh. i've seen some builders that have slowed down because they're not sure if they want to finish the whole entire development in, in an area in a certain area so yeah i think it just depends on on the area too you know if you've got a lot that you're building in like let's say in a really demand area i don't see why that would go down but if you're building on uh, more of a development city like you you know who knows yeah, um, and I think uh, in real estate in general, it's still kind of too early to tell because the pandemic's only been like a month, a few months. And so uh, I think it takes some more time. Uh, I know particularly in the uh, commercial real estate side, uh, it's still really slow. Uh, we can't, we don't really know what's going on yet, but 
I know there's something brewing and it's coming. So uh, let's see, Kiva asks, if material costs are the same in the US, when wouldn't, or then wouldn't it be better to build new homes where it will appraise a higher, okay. Um, then build okay so if, if material costs are kind of the same uh would it be better to build in a, a location that will um that 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 will go up in value uh, quicker will appreciate faster i guess that's his question uh yes i mean we, we all like just like just like when we're rehabbing right we all want to make, yeah. make sure we find the rehab in the best area because they always talk about you know location, location, location. So it, yeah, of course it makes a lot of sense to to be able to build somewhere that you know it's going to sell higher. Now the downfall is that when you're picking in these lots, you know proportionally wise they're going to be a lot more expensive too. And sometimes the lot can be a lot more than the house you're building itself. Uh, the thing, the second thing is obviously materials. Uh, and most likely materials are really kind of the same. Uh, now labor is also different. So let's say you know I've done some projects uh, out of state where I realized that. The labor for uh, uh, electrical work out of state in this state was a lot cheaper than it was in Minnesota. So yeah. uh, labor can also, you know, play play a big factor in it too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's just not materials. It's like the land and the labor that also uh, plays into it. Okay. Um, it, it's the labor. Uh, how much is usually the labor cost and per percentage to the whole bill? Do you know? So it, it, it's it's hard to put that in numbers because when you're selling a lot of this stuff out in a gig, um, you're, the bid that you get, the proposal that you normally get is usually a, a bid that covers materials and labor. Uh -huh. I haven't really broken it down to see how much really it is because I haven't really built a house where I could get all the work myself. Um, yeah, but yeah. I like to also think that the key, ter the key thing about contractors, it, it just depends on what you do. Uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say if you are building a deck and the, the material is going to cost you $5,000 to build yeah. a deck, the contractor's price is usually about Five thousand too, so it'll be ten thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's very typical. It's almost double the the material cost. Okay. Uh, YP Yang as uh, what's the average cost per square? I know you kind of mentioned this, but maybe you could repeat it. What's the average cost per square feet to build around the Twin Cities area? Again, it goes it goes by area. Uh, yeah. And and it goes by based on what kind of lot you 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 end up buying where. In, in, in the Twin Cities, I'd say to, to cost the bill on average is conservatively it's about 100 to 110. That's the number that you wanna, uh, you wanna play around with. Um, I wouldn't wanna push it any lower than that. Uh, there's been some deals where we, have, we were able to push it down to 85 per square. Uh -huh. um, and so, but then 100 to 110 is safe to say. Okay, well, that's good to know uh, for budgeting purposes. Uh, let me see. Uh, he asks again, uh, what job would you hire out and what job would you do yourself? I guess you specifically. That's a good question. And uh, I train project managers on this all the time because, you know, there's some things that you're good at where, let's say you've got a, a, a project manager that's just really good at tiling, right? And um, one of the key things why they would do the work themselves is because they're also passionate. So uh, tiling is something that you want to make sure it's done correctly uh, because, you know, when you're selling this house, you know, these homeowners they're looking at all this tile work and the detail work and so if if you're not really good at laying tiles and you're probably better off hiring it out unless you're really really good at it um now another comparison is drywall so you know i used to do a lot of drywall myself and i realized that it's just not worth it you know it's not worth the time the labor on the sanding i'm sure folks yeah, have done with sanding. Drywall. <laughs> yep. um, another part that you would do it yourself well let's say let's say cabinets for example okay so canvas is also one that I always like to use an example where, you know, if you can, if you, if you've got a couple of hands to help you, um, you know, put up cabinets, it's probably one of the things that you can do yourself, but because it, it's not so hard, uh, you know, it's just having to be able to get the right uh, cabinets order and then just installing them. So for example, we'll use a uh, St. Paul Eastside Rambler uh, kitchen, for example, you can probably get about 10 to 13 cabinets and, and, and get this from Home Depot or Menards or Lowe's. And pay about pay under two thousand dollars for the materials, right? Yeah. And then it takes you maybe uh, four hours to put all these cabinets up. And yeah. so you know when you're doing this yourself, you're saving maybe about three thousand dollars in four hours versus hiring somebody who will probably charge you you know three thousand dollars to put them up. Yeah. So that's yeah. one of the examples where you could do it yourself. Okay. All right. That's cool. Um, yeah. Anything that you're able to do, I mean, that will kind of save you money. But 
I mean, uh, I guess if you uh, you were to do a new build, uh, try to stick to the product project management side of things so that you could scale. Um, right. Uh, let's see. Um, can I buy can I buy a new construction house from you and sell it as soon as it's done uh, because of property? Okay, I guess he's buying on appreciation. Do, do you have investors that buy from you guys too? I know earlier you said you're not building for investors right now, um, but do, do you also have investors buy or are all your, all your uh, buyers pretty much just the clients that are home buyers? Well, one of the reasons why we don't sell to investors is because investors like to, to undercut the value, right? And we were all investors. We were buying something. Yeah. We're not going to pay for yeah. clients. So the, yeah. that's another reason why, you know, um, you don't really build for investors. And investors usually will, will fund the money themselves and hire um, bigger companies maybe that have some sort of relationship with them. Yeah, and yeah. so um, I guess the question is, do you, can you buy it? Can you build it and then sell it? So there are loans where you can probably, you could take out loans and build the homes yourself, uh, but then, and then sell it. And that usually requires a lot more down. Um, I've, I've had homeowners ask me, hey, you know, if, if I get this traditional uh, home new construction loan and I decide to sell my house a few months after it's built, can I do that? Supposedly you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. So that's something you can, you know, you can talk to your lender, but um, you, I mean, I've seen people sell it and, um, and there's, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but I see people doing it though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, as investors, uh, we should be looking at more uh, profit margins too. So I, I wouldn't, I mean, you can, if you want, but I, uh, just for me anyways, I wouldn't like buy and base off of appreciation, sell it. Uh, unless it appreciates that much, but I don't think it's going to appreciate like, you know, uh, 30, 20, $30,000 within a year. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think I'll do that. Let's see. Uh, Chai says, um, amazing show. Instead of calling you Hong Kong, can we now call you King Kong? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, that, that was just a joke, but okay. Will you hire non-licensed contractors for new builds? I'm guessing not, but have you done that? Have I hired someone who's not licensed, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So supposedly, you know, state of Minnesota requires that every sub you hire has to be either licensed or registered with state. Um, and and I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I, I don't want to get more into the legal stuff, but, you know, I, I have seen a lot of big builders out there use uh, uh, non-licensed companies, and that's how they make it too, because... You know, if, if you have to obviously play by the rules all the time, your your profit margin is going to be a lot less. Yeah. Uh, what I've learned is that if I can work with somebody who's willing to be a liability in my company, then technically their their the liability is on me as as my company, and I'm liable for things they do. Uh, to take a risk of hiring somebody who's not licensed is not really something that I would consider because you know the risk factors isn't worth it. I'd rather pay you know a little bit more from a company that's licensed. Just yep. to make sure I'm protected, and yep. so you know, and when you're in the game of, of anything, you want to be able to to to, to grow long term. And yep. I know I understand that. You know, I remember being a young flipper. You know, uh, back in the days, there's a lot of things we did that was not correct. You know, and if I were to redo all over again, I would not do the things I you know did back then. And so, you know, it's 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 something that you ask yourself: Can you sleep at night um, when you're done with the project? So, um, I wouldn't really recommend hiring companies that aren't really licensed. Uh, yep. it's just you know liability issues all right yeah that's true so i think we got most of the uh, pretty much all the questions uh if you guys still have any questions go ahead and write it and then maybe we'll try to answer it but we're towards the end of the conversations already um so all right the big elephant in the the united states and i guess the world now the the coronavirus how, how is that affecting uh, you guys right now or do you, have you seen any effects at all you know, I, I notice that, um, I do notice that, um, it's, to me, it seems like it's more busier in construction now. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot less, obviously, the, uh, the big thing I see is there's, there's a lot less hiring for, uh, for jobs in terms of, yeah. like, basement remodel, you know, uh, uh, in China, yeah, because yeah. people don't want uh, contractors coming in and to the home. So I, I have seen a big decrease in that. But in terms of exterior work, I've seen an increase. In that. I've seen folks wanting to build more decks. I've seen yeah. folks want to do more concrete work. I've seen 
I still, you know, new construction buildings are still building houses. So yeah. um, I feel like the domino effect hasn't really hit new construction yet. And we'll see. I mean, construction is a, a essential work uh, a description or uh, essential work. Man, I went to Menards and um, because I, I just started a new rehab. So I've been going to Menards and Home Depot almost every day, essentially. There's a lot of people over there. Like, <laughs> I think a lot more than usual. And I, yeah, I think everybody's staying home. And so uh, people are working on extra home projects, I guess. Um, so uh, uh, that's cool. Um, let's see. Okay, so what, what are the goals and plans for the future? Because I know you said you're launching another company, maybe, what is it, e Eco Green uh, and a bunch of other stuff. So what's sort of your plan for your businesses and for the future? I think I think my plan is um, is the way I look at um, just business in general is um, you know another opportunity I have at partners is you know I get agents coming in and um, really great agents that are really skillful and stuff and I, I always think that you know our home market is so talented we're so talented in in every aspect but if we can learn how to to maneuver and work together I think we can really grow a lot you know so you know you got to ask yourself it's you know, it's, yeah, money is a, is a big thing and it's very sensitive, but, you know, let's, let's, let's make, let's set up legacy for, for our, our generations, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, we've seen other generations beyond us that's done a lot of work uh, in the community. So, you know, now we got to ask ourselves, what, what can we do collectively as a group to grow that, you know? So yeah. I see uh, collaboration with, you know, you know, uh, partnership uh, and, you know, in terms of uh, construction wise, we want to be able to grow, you know, we want to be able to tackle these, government projects that, you know, uh, because we're a minority owned business, we have an advantage of getting these business or uh, these uh, contracts from the yeah. state and from yeah. the county. So, you know, how can we come together and work on these millions, millions of uh, dollar projects? Yeah, yeah. And so for us to grow, we can't grow doing these small projects individually, yeah. but it's the big projects that will push us into Excel. So I can't do it alone. You know, I look forward to having to be able to team up with other investors, other um, you know, uh, entrepreneur people that have that mindset, so that way we can grow as as a group. Yeah. Oh, that's a great. Uh, uh, I mean, that's a great thought process, right? Uh, I see. Like, I mean, the city councils and all the uh, 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 all the elected officials that we put in place, they're trying to build our uh, help our community. But you guys are actually out there, actually building and rebuilding our community like one home at a time, but hopefully you could do like 50, 60 home at a time in the future. So uh, that's great because when you, when you put new builds in that, that really raised the value of all the properties around there uh, and it cleans up the, uh, uh, our community, right? So that's great that you guys are doing that. Um, all right, let's ask uh, you some personal questions because some, um, uh, the, yeah, so because we're towards the end already. Okay. Well, I guess before that, Keith wants to know, um, what home improvement stores do you prefer? Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards? You know, you know when it comes to cost, Menards is still the, the, uh, the better, better uh, company to go to. But when it comes to quality of materials, I think Home Depot has got the edge. Home Depot and Lowe's got the edge. Yeah. For me, I'm all about customer service. You know, I think customer service is really important. So, you know, um, you know, I, I just feel like overall Home Depot has better overall customer service. So sometimes I'm willing to pay more to get that service than to go to, you know, a uh, place that doesn't really give me great, great service. And also it depends on who you, who you know in the building department. I think when you're a builder, okay, the, the department that you focus the most is the, uh, the lumber yard and the building department. So if you've got a guy in there that understands your business, where let's say, for example, if you're doing a roof job, and you, you send them all the measurements and they, 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 they get all the measurements or all the materials ready for you. And okay, you might have that relationship with that company. So it, yeah. you know, it, can, it can be a couple of factors. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that as contractors, I mean, each of the, these uh, uh, um, uh, stores, they have, you know, the construction area or uh, that you could go and talk to. Um, and, and so, yeah, some, some of the inside guys, if you have that relationship, it does help. Um, let me see. All right. So personal questions. What, what else do you do other than real estate? Because you have a bunch of real estate related businesses. So you must have some personal time too, right? Yeah, I try to. Um, <laughs> you know, having three kids is pretty busy, you know. So, you yeah. know, when I'm off work, I do try to spend as much time as I can with my kids. Uh -huh. And so, you know, uh, I think a part, of, a part of life isn't just making money. It's, it's also being able to see your kids grow up. 
and, you know, providing them that mentorship that, hey, you know, um, you know, that your dad did work hard, you know, uh, to get you guys where you guys are, you know. So yeah. I think a part of me is trying to get my kids to see that, you know, it, it, it is about hard working too. It's not about just, you know, uh, getting up and doing the minimum work, but it's about yeah. being, being able to excel. So I do like to spend time with my kids. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm a big sports person. So, you know, if there's any like pickup basketball, football, something I do, you know, I try to go out and try to stay in shape. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, I don't have a lot of hobbies to be honest, besides just spending time with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, me too. I think uh, I used to do photography, but I, I, I mean, I have all this business, business stuff. And then now I have my daughter too. So she's taking a lot of my hobby time. So uh, that's what I spend time with her now uh, as part of what I do. Uh, what do you like to do for fun? For fun? Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I, uh, one year, I, me and my younger brother, we used to go out and golf a lot. So, I, I mean, I think golf is something that, I, you know, as we get older, you might actually start doing more because, you know, it's, it's a physical and mental game. And I think uh -huh. it's really important that you, you know, I think golf is one of the sports that you get to know yourself a lot better than any other sport. So. Really? Um, if if yeah. I can really do more golfing, I would definitely want to do more golfing. Yeah. Oh yeah, my my buddy just or my business partner, he's just like, yeah, we need to go golfing. So I I, I uh, yeah, because we drive by, you know that that is it Keller Golf Keller? Course, or yeah. the the one by Menards, yeah, because we pass yeah. it all the time, because we're back and forth there all the time. So yeah, maybe we'll we'll have to try that one of these days. Okay. All right, yeah, again, we're towards the end of the show. So uh, uh, before we go, though, let's do some closing stuff. That uh, I usually ask for book recommendations. So do you have any books that you read that you could, uh, any like real estate books that you read that maybe you could recommend for us? Sure. Um, I've, I think books is definitely an, an essential thing. Uh, and, and what I always tell people is this. Uh, you can read as much, as many books as you can. You can read, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's, yeah. you know, books. You can read, uh, there's these books that says, you know, um, you know, um, making shit happen. Yeah. Um, you know, all these, all these books that you can read. But I think the ultimate thing you got to ask yourself is, after reading these books, are you going to do something about it? You know, yeah. um, motivation comes really quick and it leaves. So to me, it's like the books shouldn't motivate you to, to do something. You should have to be able to motivate yourself. Yeah. So, I mean, books like, you know, it's, you know, it, yeah, there's, there's all these books, all these great books. And but the books that talks about life, I mean, I don't have a particular one that I can say, oh, read this book. Mm -hmm. But if you can read a book that can, you can relate to a lot of it, your life and yeah. your financial goals, okay, those would be the books to, to, to be able to focus on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, reading, it's a great first step. And then after that, you really have to take the actions, right? So mm -hmm. uh, that's good. Um, Okay, so how can people get a hold of you if they want to, you know, uh, sign up to be an agent or, you know, learn more construction stuff or, or you know, uh, ask you general questions? How, how do they get a hold of you? Well, you can uh, message me on Facebook. Um, if you're an agent and we, right now we're partners, we're doing this thing obviously because of COVID-19 is if you want to transition to our brokerage, we're not charging you any fees right now. We're, we're waiving all your ENOs, your business cards, your, your, D, your DLC fees. Uh, you know, we're, we're waiving all that, so if you just you know message me, email me. Uh, in terms of want to be a project manager, just just message me, and uh, we're actually having. Uh, I'm not going to be hosting a, a PR information session, so if you're interested in learning more about that, just either send me a, a private message. Oh, hey, I'm interested. I mean, I'm interested in the project management piece. I'm always trying to like learn project management stuff, so uh, maybe I have to message you after this. Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay so uh facebook uh hong kong and then what's your uh what's your uh uh uh, uh brokerage name or a website so maybe people can uh, search it's partners it okay say mm -hmm. that again sorry partners okay all right that's cool all right uh lastly any final tip or uh, uh anything you could leave us with and then we'll leave it at your uh, final tips or thoughts for both like uh seasoned and brand new investors I'd say, you know, um, your time is really short and you'll realize that when you get to do something that you really love in life, time flies really quick, you know, uh, versus your eight to five job that keeps you, uh, you know, keeps you in slow motion every day. So, you know, if you're interested to making that change, you know, take action now, you know, uh, um, I took action, most people that can relate to, we took action very, 
during that time the market was down and it also went broke. So, you know, in real estate, there's not really a good or bad market. It's just how you approach it. So, you know, it's just getting to the right mentorship and understanding what steps to take. Uh, and so, I mean, if you really believe that real estate is something for you, um, then, you know, make the change, you know, make it happen. And you know, it doesn't, it's not going to happen overnight, but if you're a person that you, you've thought about it, you've dreamt about it and you're, you, you picture yourself daydreaming doing real estate, then it's definitely for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, with that said, those are good thoughts. Uh, do the things you like because time goes faster. So, uh, I know that, uh, time did fly through this conversation. Uh, we over an hour and 20 minutes already. So, uh, I just want to thank you. Uh, I thank everybody for tuning in uh, today. And especially, uh, thank you, Hong Kong, for all your time and your expertise and all the information that you shared. Okay, so thanks, man. All right, thank you too. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you later. Thanks. Yeah.